Good evening, parents. My name is Alejandra de la Torre, Family Engagement Program Manager. We are thrilled that you're here with us tonight. We have information with you. We, are, we have great news for you, and it's always great to have you here. I would like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Antonio Castro, who is our mental health manager at district level. He will be making a, a very exciting announcement and speaking a little bit about it. Also, we have Nereida Guerra, who is our administrative assistant and who is, uh, once um, I start sharing my screen, she becomes my eyes and my ears. And Mr. Diaz, who is our director of language support services, will be joining us soon. So with that said, I'm going to start sharing my screen. So you have access, visual access to the topics that will guide the conversation tonight. to see my screen and let me hit the present button and okay so officially called to order our district parent advisory committee meeting of september 15th at 5 p.m just so you know if you have acquaintances who speak spanish only we always offer a spanish session in the morning it is recorded and we have an evening session uh, in English, which we also record as I have uh, shared with you. So uh, with that said, please look on the screen. You can see our agenda. This will be the topics that we will address tonight. Um, uh, we have a special uh, presenter, Mr. Castro, uh, but we have a few announcements. Uh, we have uh, resources to show you on the screen just to uh, be continuously on the same page. We also will share with you about our, our elementary band program. Uh, very excited to share with you about the homework hotline. We have details, directions, etc. cetera. Uh, we also have a present. It's a four minute present for you. And we also have a brief COVID-19 update, which Dr. Miranda gave at another meeting uh, recently. Uh, he couldn't be uh, here with us tonight. And then we will open the microphones should you want to share something with us. Uh, Ms. Guerra will be monitoring the chat. The chat is open for you to share uh, input and to ask questions if you need. Uh, so with that, let's get started. And uh, reminding you our recordings for the meetings are posted on our website. On, on our website and the chat is open. We will open the microphones, but also a special announcement is that we have been in contact with uh, Dr. Mooney, who's our director of secondary curriculum and instruction. And he is um, in the final stages of being able to finalize a, uh, a meeting with parents and for parents regarding Odysseyware, which is the platform that students are using when they're in secondary middle school and high school, and they're on the full online learning model for semester or the entire year. So we want to be sure that our families have that information, that, that they feel comfortable, comfortable with the platform. I'd like to uh, open the microphone to Mr. Castro. Mr. Castro, we have uh, your visual on the screen, and I believe I open your microphone. Again, thank you for joining us. I would like to share with parents that you are a consistent ally when we think of reaching out to parents and reaching out to uh, the families we are here to serve. When we think of our students and, and their uh, social emotional needs, uh, you certainly come to mind consistently. So thank you for being here and you have exciting news to share. So uh, your microphone is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Alejandra. Can you hear me? Is, are, are you yes, I can well? hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that introduction, by the way. So I really love the word that you just said, an ally, because that's definitely how I see myself in my role. I'm, I'm here as a support to our students, but also to our families, to our parents. So thank you so much for just for those kind words. Uh, parents, the, the exciting news that I wanted to share, and I think that the word is little by little getting out to our school district as we have sent out communication via, um, of, I believe it was a message that we left for parents. Communications sent out some communication uh, via, I believe, email and some uh, voice message, I believe, or a, or a teleparent that was sent out. And it has to do with this emotional support hotline. 
you know, <clears throat> we, we were very much inspired and motivated to find a different way to reach our students who are very much isolated, who are very much disconnected right now, and who are just going through a lot of emotional turmoil. We, we wanted to think outside of the box and think of a way to try to reach out to them in addition to some other kind of creative things that we're doing, like social media and things like that. But the Emotional Support Hotline Parents is an idea that came out of a meeting that we had with high school students last uh, March or April. And it was a big cry for a, a, a place where kids can call without commitment, without you know, any formal commitment to just get connected to someone. So what we have and what we offered, and we just launched this emotional support hotline about three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago, and it's really just a, a place for kids to get connected. Again, for those kids that are feeling overwhelmed or they're feeling stressed out or they're feeling disconnected or, or they're just experiencing whatever emotional turmoil, the hotline is being, um, it's being serviced by counselors who have been trained, right, to – uh, support kids to triage those phone calls as well if need be. But it's really just a support. Again, there's no commitment. Kids do not need to sign any paperwork. It's not formal therapy per se, but certainly we are trained or our counselors are trained to provide uh, support to students, to talk to them. The, the, the idea is really to help kids, to, to help them regulate, right? It's to increase their resiliency. A lot of our kids have resiliency. They just don't know how to tap into it. And so our counselors have been trained to help kids to tap into those in, in that to that inner resiliency that does exist in our kiddos. So we're here. It's a free service. You can call during business hours, which is eight to four thirty. Um, again, there's no commitment. Now uh, we've gotten a lot of phone calls from parents, by the way, and it's awesome because parents are calling because obviously they're concerned about their kids, but we're getting them connected. You know, if if it's not internally to our own mental health program. We've been able to connect parents to the crisis stabilization unit or to other resources in the community that they may not be aware of. So it's a line for students, but parents, you are also more than welcome to call. Actually, that's been the majority of our calls for the last couple of weeks, parents calling, wanting to get more information. So we're excited um, to have this service available, parents. Like I said, there's no commitment. If you just want to call and get information, give us a phone call at this line. I know that the number is displayed there. The number is 909 Five eight zero five zero three nine. And as always, parents, if you want to reach out to me, I have that district email, Antonio underscore Castro at cjusd.net. You can also call my office at 909-580-6694. Any questions that you have, parents, any information that you need, especially as it relates to mental health and case management. If you have any basic needs that you're struggling with, give us a call, parents. We, don't, we can't promise you something, but we can definitely try to figure out a solution for you. So that, that is the announcement. Thank you so much for the time, Alejandro. I really appreciate it. And again, any questions, please do not feel uh, you know, hesitant. Don't hesitate to ask or don't hesitate to call or contact me. Thank you, Mr. Castro. I noticed you're in your vehicle. So thank you. It is an example of how we're making things work these days. We are uh, learning to be flexible, to adapt, and to think creatively to, to make sure that we make every attempt to fulfill the needs of this community. Thank you for being with us. I would like to just ask you uh, briefly, I don't want to keep you long, but definitely ask, uh, what is it that parents, that uh, students told you at the high school level that m inspired you to do this for them? I, I am afraid that at times mm, students, because they're in that age, adolescence, uh, may not be as uh, moved or as, comfortable reaching out to their parents or sharing with their parents if that has not been a continuous um, part of the dynamic between parents and Correct. children. So what is it that you heard from students that made you think, oh boy, I need to, I need to uh, be creative and, and, and make this happen for them? You know, I think it's, 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 it's the platform, what they were looking for. So this was, by the way, it was a meeting with a lot of our student leaders from different um, high schools. And the other thing that I want to clarify, the hotline is open to any student. We've uh, sent out the message to uh, sixth grade parents. And the reason we're not advertising it to the younger kids is because we want parents to be aware and to offer that to their kids. So we send out the, the communication. We're not making the phone number readily available to kindergartners, per se. But certainly if their parents want their kids to call, they can call. It's any level, any grade level. But going back to the meeting that we had, um, you know, the students were basically, and it's what you just said, Alejandra, it's the fact that 
kids wanted a private, confidential space where they can talk and get connected. That's That was the resounding kind of message or need that they were expressing is, look, you know, we, we know that therapy requires consent. We have that, right? That's what our program is there for, is for those kids that need ongoing uh, support. But obviously, we need parent involvement. We need parents' permission. But for the hotline, it's not therapy. It's, it's a place for them to get connected. And, and the biggest kind of need that kids were expressing is we need a confidential space, right, where we can talk to someone. Because that's what kids were really asking for back in March and April. They wanted to feel connected to someone without having the commitment, without, and also having the privacy was huge. They just wanted a private, confidential space to connect with the counselor, to let them know about their issues. And, of course, we're more than trained to lead them in the right direction. We have all kinds of resources where we're not going to just leave a kid hanging with their emotions as well, by the way, because that, that's also a concern. We don't want to just open up a can of worms and then leave the kid without any additional support. So our program is more than trained to help triage those kids to whatever services that they need. But it goes back to the confidentiality, Alejandra. It goes back to the need for kids to just have a safe space to connect to somebody that they can kind of relate to. You know, the, the beautiful thing about our program is that it's composed primarily of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, university students. So they're young people that have great energy, and they're very good at relating and connecting to kids. So it's, it's a great service all the way around. But, again, it goes back to that need to have a confidential safe space where kids can just get connected. And that's what they were asking for, and that's one of the big reasons why we created this anonymous hotline. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess we will reach out to you. We have further questions. We should let you go. Absolutely. And uh, thank you again very much. We look forward to having you in the future at one of our meetings. I'm Alejandra. Thank you so much. For thank you time. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, parents. So we know from Mr. Castro, he has made this available because it is something that resonates with him and it's something that our students are asking for. And I've also had conversations with high school students. They have shared with you in several, with me in several locations that although they may have a very good relationship with their parents, they still want to uh, share with someone else, someone who can be neutral, someone who can just be there to listen and without, like Mr. Castro was saying, without strings attached, without the pressure of what is what is it that I have to comply with uh, if if I sign up for this? So I I wonder uh, if many of our students will be reaching out. And I know parents, you are the best judges of the state of mind uh, for your children. So if you notice that there's any any uh, level of pressure or any behavior that moves you to consider this, then maybe that's your answer. Because when we question something. And that can be very well the answer that we're looking for. And with that, I would like to just share on the screen briefly uh, our website, www.cjusd.net. Um, I wanted to share on the screen with you. Uh, most of you may be really familiar with the site, but I still wanted to just remind you of a few things. So you know that I, I have it here in my buttons for quick access, but uh, just to show you when you put our acronym in, uh, we come up immediately. So that's how you get there. And it takes you to our homepage. Okay. So just wanted to uh, show you uh, a few items that are uh, of interest. All of our meetings are recorded and posted here. For those of you who have yet to get a parent ID number for the parent portal, this is where you go. This is where you go to obtain a parent ID number for the parent portal. What the parent portal does is that it gives you a um, quick access to information about your child. And if you have more than one student, when you enter through the parent portal, you get all your students, of course, every single one of them in their own space, but it definitely is a plus when we think of monitoring our students, of finding ways to acknowledge their effort and their hard work, or also a place where we can go 
and in a positive uh, spirit of collaboration conversation, uh, talk to them and say, let's go and check uh, how you're doing and where I may need to help you and I'm here for you. So that's how you go about the parent portal. Uh, you input that information and let you how you enter the parent portal. So you see this vertical uh, menu, you go to the queue and it opens the option for both the student portal or the parent portal. When you click on the parent portal link, what you see is a uh, couple of boxes that appear here once it loads. And on the first one, you input your parent ID, it's your PIN, and then your password. If you don't have one yet, go to that other uh, icon where I showed you, and you should receive an email from our uh, information technology department with your parent ID number and with a temporary. The temporary password will be one of those pass passwords that is difficult to uh, remember. But when you get in, you can reset your password to one that is friendlier for you to uh, to remember. So. I would like to then um, go to the next slide. No, never mind. I think I still want to show you something else. Okay, I'm sorry. When I'm on sharing my screen, it's a little tricky to get a new tab. So, um, just going back to our, our web page, uh, when we look at leadership, you can see uh, information messages from our superintendent, Dr. Miranda, and you also can find uh, our board members here. You can um, look at what area they serve and also the board meeting dates. If you want to participate, if you want to provide us input with feedback, you attend our board, board meetings virtual and we announce them um, uh, promptly. Also, please notice our schools and the directory for new parents who, uh, who are joining our school district. This is the geographical area that we serve. And then we see the school directory. Uh, this is a quick access, rather quick, for your uh, home uh, homeschool pages. When, uh, when you have more than one student in particular, it's really handy because you can just uh, click on, on the link and it takes you to that school's uh, web page. You may notice that the look and the uh, distribution of the web page is consistent throughout. It, it is um, organized in the same manner we wanted there to be cohesive, a cohesive look for you to be uh, comfortable navigating. The only thing that changes is the appearance uh, based on the on the colors of the school site. Uh, another uh, piece of information that I would like to uh, show you. Here is uh, our departments. If, if you say, uh, if you want to get in touch with nutrition services or learn about what they're doing, where, at what size they're distributing uh, and go meals, this is where you go. Uh, these are the sites, the schedules, uh, please working on extending um, the 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 sites where we offer the grab and go meal service and we should be announcing that here uh, for now we have seven and nine schools but know that uh, we are wanting to make sure that we expand the access and that is something that is in the works so please uh, we want you to be comfortable with our website um, we want to make sure that that you find the resources that you need and Ale, with that, it's Monday. Can you show them again how to get their parent portal ID? They're asking in the chat. Can you okay. show them again, please? Thank you. Of course, certainly. Parents were asking and see, uh, because I don't see anything other than my own screen. Uh, Nede is the best. She She's always my eyes and my ears, and I'm so grateful. So, okay, so 
you go to www.cjusd.net or you just input CJUSD and it takes you here. This is our homepage. And so if you do not have a parent portal ID number, uh, you go to our main website here and then you scroll down after the main messages, you go here. This is the icon where you can get that, um, you can request that information. I, I have to tell you, please, if you're, or not, if you're not sure that we have an email on file for you, that is absolutely necessary for you to, to have a parent uh, because that's how we communicate with you through, through the email. So please make sure we have your email on file. If you have questions, reach out to your teachers, reach out to your site administrator. I, I, I would help you, of course, absolutely, if, if you need. So send me an email. Neda, would you please put my email on the chat or our email? And we'll, we'll go from there, but pretty yes. much, uh, thank you. So what happens is that you click here and there's a very brief questionnaire. questionnaire. You answer those questions, which include your email address, and then you receive an email from IT, Information and Technology, with your parent ID number and also with a temporary password. So let me show you then what's your entry point when you want to look at uh, your student's information. So you go here, uh, uh, there's a vertical menu, which is inactive at the, oh, okay, no, it's, it is active. Uh, Okay, so you click on the queue, and this is also the way uh, your students can access their information. And they're more used to going through ClassLink, but this is also an entry point for them. But this is where you, a parents would click for the parent portal. And so uh, you input your PIN, your PIN, in the first box. On the second box, box you input your password initially. IT will send you a temporary password, one of those difficult passwords uh, to remember. But you enter with that password and then you reset it at, at your first entry uh, visit to the portal. Uh, and you can switch it for one that is easier for you to remember. If you need support with the parent portal, uh, please reach out to your teacher, your uh, administrators at the site, reach out to us. I'm always very happy to help. Okay. That good, Nede? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I guess we can proceed. We can continue. Okay, so uh, with that, we want to make sure that every parent ideally has their parent ID number because that is a, a very good tool to monitor how your students are doing and to be our best allies at home as you are. Now with that, Neda, is Dr. Heider or Ms. Duckworth joining us or not yet? If we'll make the announcement here. I don't see them uh, as participants. Them okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing because I didn't hear that. Hello, Mr. Diaz, Mr. Diaz is joining us, welcome. Hi all, welcome, thank you. I don't see, I don't believe I see Ms. Uh, Dr. Heider. Oh. Ms. Duckworth is here. I guess she can make the announcement. Ms. Duckworth, welcome. I just made you panelist. Welcome. Good evening. And I'm opening your microphone. And let me go back to the presentation. Okay. I love this quote. I do. Do the honors, please. So good evening. Thank you for having me here tonight. My name is Vanessa Duckworth. I am one of the elementary band teachers in the district. And we are starting band classes for fifth and sixth grade students. So any fifth or sixth grade student may join band at any of our elementary school sites. Meetings are this week. There is uh, There are two meetings tomorrow night. And there is a Spanish only meeting on Thursday night. So if you are at all interested in joining our.
band or if your student is interested in joining our band, please come to one of our meetings. You can also visit our website at, um, I should, I'll throw it in the chat. Thank you. That's a wonderful idea. And, and I must say, while well, you type it in that uh, the team, our, our band teachers have, have done an amazing job of creating a comprehensive website where any type of information that parents need, it's there. It's wonderful. Is it on the chat now, Ms. Duckworth? It should be on the chat now. Beautiful. Okay, so with that, Ms. Duckworth announced the meetings. Uh, we want to make sure that you uh, consider, because can you talk uh, with uh, parents briefly, Ms. Duckworth, about the, what impact does, um, does music have in the brain of a child in, in their academic uh, life uh, from your experience? So music is so far reaching and I, in these times, in these COVID times, I cannot express how important this is because music allows your child to think and express themselves in a completely different way. I have seen students who are so angry and then they start playing their instrument and within about five or 10 minutes, you can actually watch their mood shift as that just takes over their brain. So when we have music classes, we're focusing on reading. So your student is benefiting in their um, language arts class because we're working on tracking across the page, identifying and decoding symbols. So th there's reading improves all of math, all of music is made out of math. And so we talk about fractions and we talk about addition and subtraction. So again, your math skills are growing. And then we talk about science, how is sound made? How does your instrument work? How is that impacting what is happening in your brain? How are the neurons crossing each hemisphere to really create new pathways to expand your brain? And then history and how each song that we're learning was a part of a certain culture and how that culture is impacted by that song, what the song meant in those times. So music is so important and especially in these times, if you're looking for something for your student to do a way for them to interact beyond their regular classroom. Please, uh, if they're in fifth and sixth grade, music class is a great idea. Thank you so much, Ms. Duckworth. So we look forward to our parents considering for their students. Of course, this is something that the students should be open to. Uh, can you uh, let parents know if at the moment they're not a very comfortable in their ability to provide an instrument for students? Uh, are there any options for them? I know that through our local control accountability plan, we uh, were able to uh, uh, allocate $100,000 to the program. Can you speak briefly to parents about their options if they're considering, but they may hesitate uh, for lack of uh, uh, funding uh, in the family? Sure. So every one of our schools now has instruments available for students to borrow if they cannot afford an instrument. So all you need to do on our website is a um, permission slip to register for brand and also an application to borrow an instrument. And we are going through those in the order that they are received, but every school site has instruments. They are used, but we have been spending the last two weeks cleaning every single instrument in our um, inventory. So they are clean and ready to be checked out and they are available free of charge for anybody who needs to use them. Thank you so much. And I understand that you have witnessed time and time again, students who joined band who were probably uh, rather not, not completely disengaged in school, but a little bit of a struggle. And once they join band, their academics improve and their engagement improves. It's just a win-win situation, correct? Correct. Okay. It it's a great emotional outlet for these students. Wonderful. And I hear you have a compliment on the chat saying that you're an awesome band teacher. <laughs> okay. It just popped in and out. That's as much as I see. Okay. Well, well thank you very much for letting me be here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Duckworth. Please close your microphone and we will uh, proceed with the presentation. She closed it. Thank you. Another great announcement. Mr. Diaz, would you like to do the honors? 
Mr. Diaz is our director of language support services, and this is something that uh, our executive cabinet has been uh, putting a lot of effort and attention to knowing that uh, as we navigate through this new virtual learning environment, it is important that we are creative and receptive to, to the needs of our uh, family. So I see that Mr. Diaz is on the phone, so I will get started. I'm glad I can see him uh, just this tiny bit, but it's good. So uh, on the screen, you see uh, the schedules that will be in place when your elementary, middle, or high school student is uh, needing help to complete their homework. So, as you can see on the screen, our elementary students will be served uh, between 4 and 6 p.m. If your student is in 7th or 8th grade, it's between 5 and 7. And if they're high school, uh, which is 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, uh, we, we will be there to help from 6 to 8 p.m. And why did we uh, think of the homework hotline it is because uh, by virtue of the limited interaction that we experience these days uh, through uh, during this uh, virtual learning moment, uh, I um, I have heard from many parents. Teachers are also aware. All of us are aware that we need to support parents further. And uh, when we support students, we support you parents. Uh, I have had parents who call me and say, I don't know how to help my child with homework. Uh, the math homework is in particular uh, a mystery because uh, I, that's not the way I learn math, et cetera, et cetera. And I know a lot of you can relate. So please look on the screen. Uh, the schedule is there again, but uh, to the right of the screen, you see the link. That is the link that it takes you to uh, the team uh, in, in the homework help uh, hotline. So that link, and it takes you to a form. We want to have an organized way to serve you. So what happens is in the form, you state the student's name, school, grade, and teacher. And, and the form will have the information. So you can take a picture if you would like to have the link but uh, you provide information and then we also want to pair your child by grade and by subject matter and so that's why we're asking you to tell us where what type of homework your child needs help with is it math if it's is it science is it language arts and of course for high school students they will have more specific needs which will be directed of course accordingly uh, an, an acknowledgement email will originate upon receipt of your request. So you will get an email right back saying, we received your request, please expect a response from us, etc." cetera. Uh, just know that the homework help team will get back to you during their work hours. So if, if you're doing homework at 6, at 6 a.m. or if you're doing homework at 9.30 p.m., uh, don't hesitate to still fill this out. Uh, fill it out and ask. We want to emphasize in how important it is that uh, that parents are proactive. If you uh, if you need support, we are here. If there is a need for adjustment, we are here. If uh, if you wonder how long your child should be doing homework for, or if you wonder how much, what is the expectation for interaction in terms of time uh, between students and and teachers? That is also something that we are going to bring you. Uh, the 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 audience this morning was curious about what would be the standard expectations, uh, what parameters we uh, we are expecting that teachers uh, will have in terms of interactions with their students. So that's going to be at at our next meeting. We are working on content already, and and also the uh, the questions that you share with us or the comments on the chat will also guide our future agendas. So please know that this is available to you. Uh, we wanna be sure that, that you feel supported and that you know that we are in this together. And uh, when this is over, we, we can look back and celebrate that, that we made every effort to support our kids.
Uh, and then really briefly, just a few ideas to share with you. Uh, so parents have shared that their students <clears throat> are spending too many hours uh, in front of a screen. Uh, and we, we acknowledge that, and, and that is certainly not our expectations. So it's important that, that there's also human contact. When we think of 21st century, and, and even when our children are adults and join the workforce and have to work in teams, it is important, it is essential that they have human traits, that they have a soft skills. And, and part of those is the ability to communicate. So we are encouraging you to make sure that there's conversations at home, uh, because that inspires and motivates thinking in the child. And it also helps them by virtue of just the interaction to develop social skills, to know when to pause, when to listen, et cetera. Uh, also, oral communication at home can have a positive impact on literacy. When your children are communicating, when your children are reading, when your children are writing, uh, we can see when when students have those conversations at home, it really has a positive impact. And so how do you do that? Have conversations, have conversations, have conversations, and also read, read every day. Have them read to you, you read to them, you take turns reading a page, et cetera. Be creative. Uh, find opportunities to have conversations about the books you read. Uh, have Just be, uh, think outside the box, and talk about the books you read when you're driving somewhere or when something happens and you can connect that story with what is going on. So it just those connections. It is, it is uh, to me in particular, I can share, I have joyful, uh, joyful memories with my aunt. Uh, her and I read a lot and she also watched a lot of movies uh, back in the day. And she would tell me the movies. I wouldn't watch the movies necessarily with her, but she would then come back and tell me the movie. Uh, so it became a story. It became something that she narrated to me. And, 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 and I remember those moments fondly. So motivate also your child to write. Email a relative, their aunt, their grandparents, someone who is away or someone whom they are not able to see at the moment. Have them send an email. Send a greeting card, surprise someone, send a thank you or a, a, an I'm thinking of you card. Have reading material available, play games, solve word puzzles, sing, or ask your child to tell you a story. Just be spontaneous, don't make it a chore, make it fun, make it um, just organic. And then here is the point where I want to show you, in case you're not aware, we have a virtual library. We have thousands and thousands of books available to your child. And so if you go back to our website, remember this vertical? Okay, so here's a media center, and this is our library. And so based on, on the grade level on the school that, that your child is attending, you will have certain access. You see, I have access to all the sites because uh, I, I work at district level. But let's say your student is at Ruth. So your child's credential will be consistent with that school site. And so what that will do is it will bring you to this uh, catalog, this uh, place where you can find books by topic, Uh, you can you can just explore. Get in here. You also have audio books. There are some of us who love to listen and not necessarily watch illustrations. So that's also an option. And it's also an experience when your child is uh, uh, an emerging reader, and we want to uh, have them exposed to models of reading where they can. Um, learn the intonation, where people pause, how do you uh, intonate when you're when there's a question in the story. So it is just positive experiences. There's also interactive ebooks and there's also other uh, 
uh, resources. Uh, our Primes Elementary is the site where we have our dual immersion program. So we have uh, students who, uh, despite uh, independent of their primary language, it can be Spanish, it can be English, it can be Uru, any language. When they participate in dual immersion program, they're learning primarily in uh, in Spanish, 90% of the time in Spanish and 10% of the time in English in kindergarten. And so that model evolves to the degree that then they learn in fifth and sixth grade, 50% of the time in Spanish, 50% of the time in English. And so that's the reason why they have access to uh, books in Spanish through Grimes Elementary. And so the, the collections are there for your students. Please give them all these subscriptions and, and these copies that, that we have available are there for you. So make sure that you uh, explore, enter here with your child. Don't be afraid to click, click wherever you want. Um, you cannot break anything. You cannot delete anything. Our 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 platforms are safe, uh, and just be able to 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 find out what is here for you. What is there for for my student? And see, we have them by subject, by grade level. So I am hopeful that you visit and that you visit, uh, especially because at this moment, uh, a trip to the public library might not be something that's an option. And so we go back and I'm almost promise. Uh, just additional ideas when we think about reading and about enriching conversation, linguistic interactions. Uh, when you think of a book, where does it take place? And what was the problem? And can you think of a new word that we uh, that we read or that we heard in the story? And this can be later. It doesn't have to be at that moment. And can you summarize the story? Can you tell the story in your own words? And uh, what questions can you ask about the story? Tell me about a character that you enjoyed. And what other ending would you have liked if you had been the author of this book? So the, the possibilities are endless. And, and they will have a, a huge positive impact on your student. And so with that, I have a present for you. It is a four minute present. And I'm hopeful that you are able to listen. So I'm gonna move my headphone. I'm on vacation. I don't know why you didn't get the papers. Okay. Whoa! Cool. Ah! She's got to be kidding me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to share that with you um, because the present is challenging and, and it can be that we are on crutches or that our students are stuck or glued to a, a screen or hypnotized by a game but there's always a way to entice them and, and, and to ask them and persuade them to think outside the box and to affirm themselves and, and to enjoy and to enjoy life so uh with that lastly and and after this we will open microphones and look at the chat i just wanted to share with you uh dr miranda uh, joined one of our meetings recently he's unable to make it tonight but uh, due to several parents asking he wanted to reassure our community that when the consideration to reopen our schools it would be on hybrid mode which would mean our students on hybrid mode uh, per their parents will attend school twice a week. The, the three remaining days will be uh, on virtual mode with all the necessary precautions. But uh, he wants to make sure that every one of our families, our parents know that when this is a consideration, we will let you know ahead of time when the time is approaching but we would be looking at state, county, and local information and, and reassured in our to make sure that when we come back, that we are able to protect first and foremost our students and of course our teachers. So uh, he just wanted to be sure that you heard it from him um, that this is the, the approach. So please, uh, Trust us that we will, will uh, when this uh, decision is made, that, that it will be made uh, with every precaution in mind. And of course, our Board of Education will give the final word based on the data that, that we share with them. Uh, our district is in constant communication with our Department of Health, Public Health. And so we are closely monitoring the state of affairs and we will uh, not make a decision that will uh, put our students in harm's way or our staff, all of us. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll go back to the real world and I'll be able to see who is here and what is happening. Um, anything that you would like to share, Mr. Diaz? Ale, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. No, not, nothing at this point. Again, um, just reiterating that we are definitely um, taking into account all of the necessary precautions um, in reopening school and, and looking at um, the safety of both your, you know, our students and our staff, um, from teachers to 
um, custodial workers, um, the whole gamut. So we are definitely taking very every precaution to ensure that, you know, as we consider reopening, that um, all of those steps are taken. So at this point, there is no immediate plan to return to school until all of those um, pieces that we just mentioned, um, we feel safe and we know that we can absolutely protect um, all involved. So thank you, Ali, for sharing that. No, thank you. Uh, any Anything else that we should aware of, Nede, from the chat? I haven't looked at the chat at all. Are we good? Just, I would like to reiterate to our parents how happy we are that they're joining us and that every meeting, every agenda is based and designed with them in mind. We want to empower you. Uh, we want to uh, be able to uh, make sure that we make every effort to to support you and, and to ensure that if your child's experience is positive. Oh, and I see Richard Vasquez with his hands up. Uh, Richard, welcome. You, uh, I'm opening your microphone. It is open. Thank you for joining us. You have a comment or a question? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Welcome. Okay. Uh, no, my concern was just about um, about the the homework. As my teacher, uh, my my son's teacher has been saying that it's going to get more homework in from time to come. And a lot of families don't have the are not are split apart, and we only have each parents both works. And we only have so much time with the, with a child on my time and as his son, my son's mom's time. What's going to happen when there's too much work and we only have a certain amount of time and we start falling behind on homework? That's been up to date. Up to date, it's been fine, but just concerned about our, the near future. Of course, and thank you for your concern. It shows how committed you are to supporting your child. And, and, and we actually have, indeed, like you said, students who have different homes because their parents are not together, but they're parenting, co-parenting the child. So uh, a good approach is to make sure that you keep a consistent line of communication with the teacher, that the teacher is aware that the student is in two different homes and the level of support may be may differ from, from between parent and parent, uh, from parent to parent. And also, uh, I think it's important that teachers communicate to parents what is their expectations in terms of what time frame within how much time should the student be able to complete the homework? We don't want to torture. Homework shouldn't be torture. Homework should be uh, just a quick practice of what was taught in the classroom during the daytime. And so it's just uh, a review or, or uh, cementing a concept. So uh, that is a, a strong suggestion that I would make, Richard. Uh, just continue the conversation with the teacher. Make sure that she's aware that, that you are supportive of your child's homework and, and ask her or him for an estimation of the time that it should take your child to complete the homework. Also, I don't know if you were present when we announced that we now have a homework uh, helpline. And, and there's a process, so we're very excited to offer this to parents. I know that as, as students grow older, uh, the, the homework becomes more of a challenge. Uh, when we think of Common Core, math is really different. So we, we certainly are aware that our parents need support with homework. And uh, when we help your child, we're helping you. So know that we are here and, and please ask that of, of your teacher. Ask what, what is your estimation of how long my child will be doing homework for every night and, and just make it work. Uh, I know this is a time to be flexible and this is a time to be creative and, and to work with one another to make it work for our kids. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And then Suzanne is also raising her hand. I open your microphone, Suzanne. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you so Hi. much. <laughs> I just personally wanted to thank you so much. You guys are doing an amazing job. You guys are humbling us. My son has gone to Grand Terrace Elementary, middle school, and now in high school. And you know what? Last year um, was the first time Dr. Miranda and Dr. D came. And God bless them because you know what? This is all brand new to each one of us and the board members and all of you guys 
are amazing. And as parents to only whether you have one child or 100 children, it doesn't matter. There is nothing more important than their safety. And I feel that that is your number one priority other than educating our kids. And I just wanted to confirm that God forbid if they have to go back because of all the politics and CDC is so confusing and I'm just confirming that's all it is. But the reason I am calling is ultimately just to thank you so much for your hard work. The teachers are amazing. My son is learning just as much virtual than him being in class. Of course, it's not the same, but you know what? Thank God that our school, our our community is successful through you guys. It takes good leaders to make good leaders. So thank you once again. Oh, I mean, thank you, Zosan. Well, we're <laughs> here for you. Uh, we cannot say it enough. And, and I can see Mr. Diaz smiling wide open uh, <laughs> because we are working long days on the weekends, uh, but we are moved and we are inspired by your children. Your kids are our objective, their success, their well-being, their development, their ability to believe in themselves, their ability to recover from this moment. This is a moment in time. And this moment when they cannot be with their friends or, or uh, interact with their teachers in person, it's a moment. And, and we we want to make every effort to to carry them through and and to one day look back and and, and smile because we did it and we did it together. Yeah. We cannot do it without you at home. So thank you so much. It's humbling. God bless you. Keep up the great work. We love you. We're here for you. Anything you guys need, you guys really truly are the dream team. So thank you once again. <laughs> I, and I want to jump in. I want to say thank you so much for for your kind words. Um, it, it you don't know how that warms our heart. And, and knowing that not all of our families always feel the same way because every situation at home is so different. Um, the the gamut, as you can imagine, runs from you know families having to work all day, sometimes families working at night, um, split families. I mean, the dynamics behind the scenes are are so um, diverse, and and they run like I said, gamuts from from all levels. So we're attempting to do our very best. This is something unknown to us as well. What this district and all districts um, have accomplished in these past several months has been unprecedented, um, trying to transfer the learning to this virtual mode of which we had to deploy, you know, 20 some thousand computers and hotspots, as you can imagine. So in, in experience, so we, we are definitely trying our best. It may not always be the, the perfect solution for everyone. Um, and, we, and we know that, but that's why these meetings are so important so that we do hear your voice. We do hear um, parents concerns from both, you know, the, the gratitude and, and the good things, as well as the concerns and the complaints, because we, we need to learn from them because we're, we keep saying we're building the plane as we fly it. Um, and some of us keep falling off the plane and the plane keeps picking <laughs> us back up and putting <laughs> us back in, but we're doing the best that we can. And, and I do want to address something that I, I keep hearing, and this was brought up in our um, um, meeting this morning which is the amount of time. So uh, I'm going to ask Ale to reiterate the schedules because we do have schedules that students should be following throughout the day. Um, screen time can vary. Uh, again, that's based on the teachers, you know, time with the students and what they're doing with that um, that time. So in many cases, there could be anywhere between a 15, 20, 30, 45 minute, um, what we call direct instruction or instruction that's live with the teacher and maybe a whole class. Um, there may be another time during the day where the teacher is um, hosting office hours so that there's individual students reaching out. Uh, there may be another time where the teacher, again, um, offers another opportunity for kids to get together virtually. Um, but like I said, that should range about four hours, okay, that, that you were talking, you know, depending again, grade level and teacher, it can range between two to four hours. Um, and then, of course, there's homework and, and activities and things that they're doing in assignments. But I want to make sure that there is a balance, as Ms. De La Torre was mentioning. Um, I, I don't want to know about students that are up till two, three in the morning doing homework or even at 11 o'clock at night. That, that is excessive. And there has to be a balance, of course, with screen time and um, in work at home as well. So um, as you've heard, and I'm hoping many of you have heard, and Ali just mentioned it today, um, we are offering a homework helpline. It just started today. Um, Ms. Patty Frost, um, one of our directors, has been hosting that and, and kind of coordinating that along with our IT director, Shane Pinnell. And um, that's just the beginning of one of the supports that we're offering, and that is after hours. 
and it's uh, an open time uh, for two about two hours. Um, and that's two hours for elementary, two hours for middle school, and two hours for high school for students to be able to log in. Um, there's a form that they fill out. Um, they get tagged to an actual WebEx link, and then they can actually jump on and ask uh, questions of certificated staff. So these are actual teachers from CDUC that are dedicating their now time after hours to maybe help students that uh, need help with their homework. We're also looking at expanding some optional maybe weekend opportunities as well, um, and then maybe some tutoring services that would support students that might be struggling a little bit with either homework or classwork. So again, we're, we're doing our best to um, reach out to the community, reach out to students, support you as parents, knowing that, you know, you know that all of us are, are doing the best that we can, and we know that you're doing the best that you can. Many of you are, are balancing work either from home or outside of the home. Uh, and then also, uh, of course, you know, supporting your students uh, with their, you know, obviously their personal needs of, of being at home, uh, eating, you know, all the normal things of home life on top of the fact that they're now doing homework. And, you know, these past several weeks have been even more daunting with the air quality being the way it's been and them not maybe being able to go outside and enjoy a little bit of fresh air, which we hope to get back very soon. So again, please do continue sharing your concerns and also your accolades because we do appreciate that because from both of those, we will learn and we will only get better. So I thank you guys for your support and patience. <laughs> Thank you. I also see uh, comments regarding uh, month work. Uh, please, uh, please reach out to each teacher. Your your teacher is your first line of of, of information, and and to attempt making an adjustment if it's necessary. Also, if you know that your child is not, uh, uh, you don't feel confident that they're uh, learning uh, as they should be. Uh, also, a conversation with the teacher. Uh, then followed by, if there's still need for adjustment, a conversation with the site administrator. At district level, we are here for you, but we are really respectful of the chain of command. Uh, if you reach out to us first, the first question we're going to ask you is, have you tried to uh, work things out with the teacher? Have you had these uh, uh, interactions or, or this, this communication to be on the same page? And so uh, I, I don't know that we can tell you uh, because we have 27 schools and, and every grade level and every child is different. We cannot tell you what is normal, what is not normal. Uh, the teacher is a, a good uh, uh, element or a good contact to gauge it, to learn what's reasonable. So please reach out to your teacher. Of course, there's instances when we need to uh, support uh, the the communication or the interactions or a resolution and we are here for you but we want you to know that uh, we highly encourage that you reach out to teachers first and then to the site administration and we are here if if you make attempts you don't hear back please by all means uh, my email address is on the screen our department has an email uh, also uh, when you send an email to lss at cjusd.net, it reaches Mr. Diaz, Mrs. Guerra, and also uh, it reaches me. So the three of us can make sure that we uh, we make uh, every effort to 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 find a solution for you. Uh, I see that uh, we have Andrea Lusk uh, raising her hand. Andrea, I'm going to open your microphone. Uh, you have a comment. Welcome. I can seem to open your microphone. I'm trying. <laughs> it doesn't let me. <laughs> hey, oh, no. can I fit on the chat, please? Ah. You know, I, I guess this is related to your. Uh... Okay, it's open. Andrea, hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello, this is Andrea. Hi, welcome. You have a comment. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for you. Have our attention. Of course. <laughs> um, the question I have is, um, with can you explain to me how 
the great is working. Um, so I've been getting notifications. Um, I'm on Odyssey where checking the assignments, make sure she's turning them in in a timely manner. Um, but I see scores like percentages with numbers, but I was curious as to if we're going to receive letter grades to have a better idea of where we're at or how are they using the number percentage scale for grading purposes? So, um, hi, this is Mr. Diaz. So, yes, you will be receiving grades, um, letter grades, um, even under the um, facilitated online learning, which is the FOL uh, through Odyssey, where um, they will, you should be also receiving, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and I'll have to confirm this because I know this is um, the online version, so it's a little different, um, but I can uh, discuss with Dr. Mooney and ask, but I believe that they should be getting a um, progress report soon uh, in okay. relationship to where they're, where they're at. But you do, because you are on Odyssey, where and it's a very different curriculum than our um, what we call hybrid distance learning students are engaged in. You have access right. to that data um, regularly, so you can monitor what has, like you said, been completed, um, and then also see what kind of scores that child is receiving for each of those assignments. Yes, um, and that's just been recent, as I was informed that assignments were assigned um, for the teacher and. She said she was turning them in and then come to find out she wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm with, yeah, <laughs> um, I told her she has her own parental school district. <laughs> so, oh, <that's> good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if she's smart enough to try to get away with something, then she's smart enough to work eight hours. And I added an extra three for her at no charge. <laughs> I, I have a, a really awesome job um, that I can take her to with me and she's hating it, but we'll see how long that lasts because she doesn't get it. <laughs> he is actually brown, a brown bag lunch right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Say hello to her. <laughs> and, 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 and do let me remind you, we've all been there. Uh, my son was a same book many years ago and he is now 28, married, and and he's become a teacher himself. So it's kind of ironic how life does turn things around. So just know that and, and keep doing what you're doing because that's exactly what you need to do. That's that's really your job as a parent to be able to monitor right. and readjust at home as needed. Um, but know that we're here to support. And, and again, do reach out to the teacher if you have questions in regards to the grading system and any, any grades that the child has received. But the fact that you can monitor it online does really help as well. Yeah, and I had I had a little bit of trouble with um, understanding for me the, the difference between right. Odyssey and Parent Portal and Google Classroom. And I was like, okay, where do I go? Do I need to download an app? And I kind of felt like she was withholding information. And I was like, oh, you know, no. if, um, if you're going to play these <laughs> games, that's that's fine, but you're guaranteed to lose because <laughs> it's been 30 years since I've been in school. I'm going to be 50 in two days, and I'm like, I'm ready. Bring it. Say well, happy birthday, birthday, first of all. <laughs> but do know that, and you are correct, and, and I think that's why it's so important, and I need you guys to remind us as well. Um, in okay. education, we tend to use a lot of acronyms, and there's a lot of different things, and we ourselves have had to learn, you know, right now, the Google Classroom environment, um, the web yeah. apps, um, Odyssey, where all these different things that, you know, kind of have been on the back end, and, and a lot of folks really haven't been engaged with, um, to right. the forefront and we're throwing these things out to parents. So please never, ever hesitate to reach out and say, what do you mean by Odyssey? Or what does that mean? What's the difference between that yeah, and the parent portal? I think, exactly. Because I think I kind of figured it out. And then, you know, when I see assignments, because I was clicking on the tabs and I don't think she was. And so I'm double checking and, you know, sitting on her shoulder like a bird right now. Good. And. I asked her because I see assignments and then I see projects and I'm like, okay, you need to start working on these projects. Like, seriously, well, we're not supposed to do anything on the weekend. I said, well, <laughs> if I, it, you know, I said, I can guarantee you that the, the school and the district and the board and the superintendent will back me up, even though I don't know them. It's my job. You're forcing me to do my job. So I'm in school too, and that's okay. Because I said it's either right here or I'll sit next to you in class too. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> so well, we definitely I appreciate your support on that end. 
I was just questioning like, you know, okay, are we going to get letter grades? And then, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned because that's just who I am. I don't want her to have late assignments. So if that's a question for her teacher, not a problem because it doesn't give like a due date. I'm not sh quite sure if I'm missing it. Maybe I don't see. Maybe it's like do it and turn it in, do it and turn it in, do it and turn it in. So um, I did get on today and I was looking and I could see where uh, she is turning things in. They are high scores and one or two low scores. And I was like, okay, but you need to get busy and you need to plug it in harder and faster. I said, take it out of first gear, take it out of first. No, and I, and I really appreciate what you're saying. And Ali, I'm going to ask that maybe you and I discuss this a little bit later, but maybe we can do sure. uh, in the very near future is maybe host uh, a very similar webinar like we're doing right now, but um, particularly to the student, you know, families that are part of the FOL or the facilitated online learning uh, with Odysseyware okay. so that we can go over what as a parent, how do you go in? How do you review their assignments? What does it mean when you're inside that platform? Um, it would maybe take us about an hour, maybe less to go over it, but maybe that's something that's we can okay. offer to, to our families. Yes, yeah, and, and be very helpful to the families. Okay. Oh, that's absolutely. Great. And Mr. Diaz, Dr. Mooney, our director of secretary, has already uh, oh. expressed that he's working on that. So Excellent. it's just a matter of time when we will summon our uh, full online learning uh, secondary families to join us and show them the platform so they feel comfortable and they know exactly where to look and, and what to look for to make sure that the student is successful. Thank you for reminding me, Ali, because yes. you're right. It's just my head has been in so many places yes. today already. Yeah. Dr. Mooney is reaching out to Odysseyware and that something for parents should be coming out shortly. You're correct. Correct. Yes, we're almost there. So thank you, okay. Andrea, well, with thank that. You. Uh, thank you. Uh, say hi thank to you, your daughter. Remind me to do this because you love her. <laughs> yeah, I okay. do too. That's why I'm going to be on it. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Beautiful. Good evening. Great. Okay, so. Thank you. You too. you too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ali, I'm going to reiterate something. I believe a, um, a parent by the name of April was asking a question as to, again, the reopening of school. Um, because she's hearing about some plans um, in surrounding districts. Again, yes, we are absolutely discussing that at the district level, trying to determine again when it would be appropriate and safe to reopen schools. Um, as you all know, we are now following a uh, what's called a color guide, um, and I believe one we're in purple right now, which is um, absolutely no. Uh, the next level, I believe, is red, and at that point, there is possibilities to reopen school. Uh, I want to reiterate that we are not in a rush to do it um, just for the sake of doing it. We want to make sure that all of our, again, families, parents, students, staff members, um, you know, certificated and classified employees are all safe so that when we reopen, we do it with, with um, every precaution uh, taken and every at least anticipated thought put through. So we are having beginning those discussions as to what it may look like and what are all the different pieces that we need to have in place, but nothing will happen until we are assured that we can assure all of you the safety of your students. So. Thank you, Mr. Diaz. And I also see Jennifer and Patricia Romero have uh, their hand up. Jennifer, I open your microphone. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. You have a question. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Hello. Hi, um, my concern was, and I did uh, email you. I spoke with you, um, Alejandra regarding um, my high school student, I guess it's another oh. concern, same, same as Odyssey Wear. Um, yes. She has been completing work at night and on the weekend. She's saying that um, the work that's posted, there is no due date. It's just working at her pace. But the, the problem, too, that she's having is she doesn't get the same um, classroom type setting as the hybrid model where she's, she gets to have the teacher explain to her the work. Um, she gets on with her teacher for about 30 minutes and then that's it. And then she, there's like maybe a quick one minute video or so for her to um, try to get an understanding of what she has to do. But sometimes it's not enough. And she just, she, I guess she tries and figures it out herself, but with Odyssey where it is a little more difficult. So that was my concern. 
we we agree with you and and i believe this was part of our emails back and forth i i also recall uh, dr mooney reached out to you as well uh, as dr yeah. Heider. we understand that uh hybrid and uh when we think of elementary students hybrid or full online are not that different uh, as of now but when we go to secondary due to the different dynamics that take place uh, because there's subject matter subject matter there's different areas that that students are taking that it wasn't a possibility to from the hr standpoint to really offer something similar to our high school students i recall your child is uh, bright and motivated uh it, sadly that is what we have to offer uh, in secondary and in high school for full online and and i know i indicated to you please trust that that we will not reopen until it is safe to do it but we highly respect and understand the selection that our parents made based on their uh on the way they look at things and also on their uh family circumstances so definitely i i can confirm with uh with uh, dr mooney uh what is it that parents uh, may expect in terms of uh deadlines for the projects or, or the assignments it's good that your daughter is interacting with with the teacher, even if it's a half an hour. Uh, a good idea is if you email that teacher as well uh, and reach out for help and, and for support and insight. Uh, also, I am not sure if you heard, Jennifer, but we are about to announce uh, a, a very well uh, expected uh, meeting with Odyssey where uh, individuals because it's a platform that we cannot speak to other than it, it, it's, it's difficult to, to navigate. And yes. it, it will be a lot less difficult when we bring that staff and, and they are able to show you on the screen that that's, that's a very strong intention on our, on our, on our end to make sure that, that our full online for parents in particular for secondary, that they have this, uh, this access to these people. And, and that they can uh, clarify any questions that, that you have about the platform. We do not have the answers for that, but be assured that we're, we're about to bring that to you. Okay, Jennifer? Okay, and then the, uh, one more concern about the Odyssey where too was that I did talk to Mr. Mooney about, um, she was in AP classes, and, and but now she's unable to, um, she's taking basic class now, but she's unable to take the AP classes. I know, yeah, and uh, there's no extracurricular and there's no AP, there's no higher rigor, it's just the standard rigor, and that is what comes with full online for high school. Yeah, and, and that's out of our control, Jennifer. We wish that we had more control over more things, but uh, as Mr. Diaz said, we're, we're doing the best that we can, and, uh -huh. and all that we can reassure you of is that when we are able to be in person again and, and out of this uh, contingency period, uh, your daughter will be able to come back within a grading uh, uh, period, semester, or, or uh, yeah, semester actually, uh, be able to go back to, to her high rigor courses when we are in person again. So okay. thank you for your patience and, and for trusting us. Please know we're doing our best with what we have. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. It's great to have you. Thank you. And if you have further questions, you know where to find me. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm going to close your microphone. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Patricia, you have uh, your hand up. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, welcome. Can Hi. You really? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, I actually did express a concern uh, during chat and I appreciate um, some answers, but I wanted to kind of branch out. Uh, what I had reached out about is as far as technology. So I have a second grader. Um, so, you know, some assistance is needed, but I do feel that our Chromebooks and our technology that is provided may not be up to date as far as being useful. Um, so I was just wondering, 
how is that being addressed? Because I do know that it's not just uh, my, my daughter. Um, and what I was explaining it during chat is, um, especially our live meetings, they won't work. There's green screens. Uh, the teacher cuts in and out. Some teacher can't see some students. I've already got, I'm on my second Chromebook. We've already switched it out. So the second Chromebook improved, but yet didn't solve the problem. Um, so what I was explaining is I'll log her in to my laptop or a desktop computer so that she can, pro you know, get the live meeting. And that will be absolutely no problems with that. So to my understanding, it wouldn't be an internet issue. It would be a device issue because any other computer works except the Chromebook for live meetings. So I just don't know how, you know, where we are at as, as maybe it's just my school or district as far as providing actual technology to assist students to be able to attend, especially since everything is around technology right now. Well, thank you for providing us with this uh, insight. Uh, we are not Chromebook users ourselves, so and that's why it's so important that you uh, that you bring this to our attention. Uh, we are not on Chromebooks, and, and we have heard from other parents that they experience something similar. I I can um, then discern that you have reached out to the teacher because there's been an exchange of device. Uh, what we can do is. Uh, bring this to our information and technology chief officer, Mr. Pennell. Mm -hmm. uh, let him know that this is an experience and uh, uh, reach out to us. Send, uh, send me an email, please. My email is on the chat. Uh, we can then uh, get an answer for you uh, from Mr. Pennell. I know he's uh, diligent in his uh, selection of, of the devices that we use that he's diligent in, in installing firewalls to protect the access that our students have when they are on our devices. But connectivity is certainly something that is of, of most importance. We want our students to be able to seamlessly uh, participate and get in and out of their sessions as, as they are summoned by their teachers. So thank you for letting us know. I was not aware. It's important that you tell us that you have attempted uh, or, or the using your own PC at home and other devices and you don't experience that uh, that gray screen or uh, the the signal dropping from the students, uh, the teacher's session. So we definitely will will share this input that you're sharing with him. I hope that helps. Yes, I, um, I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I do try my best to sit with her, especially because of her age during you know, all her live classes to ensure any technology issues, you know, won't happen. And, and you know, of course, it's a little, you know, they're, they're so intelligent to be able to work on their Chromebooks. You know, I, at seven years old, there was no way I could even turn on a computer. So it is, it's, it's awesome. But I do notice that numerous students in her class are having those issues. So it might be that parents aren't even aware, you know, hey, it's the Chromebook or if you have an alternate device, you know, it, it might be possible for there because they're losing out on, you know, the education. They're not, they're not able to see, or, you know, even the teacher points out and she has instructed me that, you know, since I've already gotten the second Chromebook that maybe we could contact IT, but it, it's not just for me, you know, it's for, it's for everyone. It's for every student who, you know, some, you can hear them, they have babysitters or they're with grandparents who, who may not, you know, and the teacher's great. She, she tries to help, those students as much as possible, but you know, it might be that maybe even reaching out to parents or just giving them some education of what they can do, um, even if it's just you know a tech, you know the, the IT department, you know, might just have to update the computers, you know, software or something. But it, it far as hey, if your student is, you know, experiencing this, this is might what it be that's not normal, or you know, they they think it's their internet. You know, oh, I, my kid is because I have bad internet, and that's what I thought. So, you know, I was already ready to call them and be like, "Hey, you need to fix this. My kid <laughs> needs to go to school." But I just had the idea of, "Hey, let me, you know, and she can use my laptop. It's it's not a problem." But yeah. you know, some kids don't have that option. So I think it's it's really important. And I appreciate you guys 
um, letting us not only, you know, chat, but comment in, you know, to be able to fully explain what's going on. Um, because, you know, kids, the only way they can see their teachers right now is a computer or their Chromebooks or see their classmates. That's the only way they can interact. So I think, you know, reaching out to parents or maybe a flyer once it gets, you know, um, situated or understanding would help as well. Beautiful. Thank you, Patricia, for sharing. Uh, definitely, this is uh, yet another example of how important it is that we listen to parents because we are under the assumption that everything should work seamlessly because that's our intention and that's what we have aimed for. However, if the experience is inconsistency or is inconsistent with our expectation, then here comes the need to, to have this conversation and, and to make necessary adjustments. We definitely will uh, share with uh, our IT department and, and that this experience is, is what you are uh, reporting to us. So, so thank you so much and, and we'll keep working together. Thank you for joining our meeting. I, I hope that you found the information provided helpful and relevant to the moment. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, I'll close your microphone now. Thank you. Okay, with that, Nere, can you update us on uh, the chat? Are we good? No, there was a question about the band lessons being recorded. Do you know, or can Mrs. Duckworth maybe respond to that question? Okay, Ms. Duckworth, your microphone is open. Thank you. So the band meetings that we are holding this week are being recorded. The band lessons uh, will not be, there will be live instruction. And then, especially right at the beginning, we will be recording little lessons that we will put up so that the kids can go back and review what we taught. So, yes, meetings are, the meetings are being recorded, but the actual class sessions um, will, will be recorded but not shared. Does that answer the question? Okay. So, students will have access to some audiovisual material uh, to refer back to even if it's not the lesson. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. You froze for a moment. I hope it's I not internet. And I'm not no, gonna come up, Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll close your microphone. Okay. Another... Uh, uh, we are approaching... Uh, yes? No, I was just gonna say several... Um, Comments came in uh, saying that their students are struggling and they're not getting support. So I don't know if you can talk a little bit on, on that, please. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes, we 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 are listening, and this has been something that parents have been sharing. They don't feel confident that their child is learning as much as they feel that they should be, and so uh, hence our effort to provide the homework support. I know that tutoring is in the works, Mr. Diaz. Uh, tutoring is in the works, and uh, it, this is yet another way for us to make sure that we are uh, aiming at, at the target from every possible angle uh, that we support our students. Please, for parents who know that their child is struggling, uh, make sure that the teacher is aware and be proactive and open with the teacher. Ask them, what can I do at home? And this is my experience. What can you do? When do we talk again? Can you give me an, an, an update on, on what you see in terms of scores or, or performance? Uh, don't wait until a, a progress report time comes because that is when, uh, when it's probably enough time has gone by that we have not addressed the matter. So that is our recommendation. Uh, number one, that you utilize and, and you uh, gain support from the homework helpline. Two, that you expect to hear back from us soon that we, uh, that we have the tutoring in place, but more importantly, that you are in consistent communication with your child's teacher, that you reach out and say, this is how I feel, what can you do, what can I do, it's time to work together. It's always time to work together, but now more than ever. So I hope that answers your question. 
if if there's a, an additional need for assessment after you have done that and you have you reached out to the site administration uh, then uh, if we can support please reach out to us as well and i hope that answers the question and it's 6 31 we don't want to keep you here all night uh, are there any more comments or, or questions in the chat netting yeah, one um, about absences being cleared. There's a parent that says that she reached out to the teacher, but the teacher won't clear the, the absence or clear. I don't know if the student wasn't absent and was marked absent. Um, it's Olivia Salas. I don't know if you want to um, oh, open her I microphone. Know. Okay, I know Olivia and, and I will, uh, Olivia, I'll send you an email and we will figure it out. Yeah, I know Olivia. So we'll take care of it. Other than that, we're good? Yes. Okay, okay. So with that, parents, again, thank you. We cannot express enough our gratitude for your commitment and your participation. And we hope to see you soon. Uh, if you know parents who couldn't attend, but would like to review the content of our presentation, it, it, it is being recorded and it will be posted on our website. Anything else, Mr. Uh, Diaz, before we uh, adjourn? No, I think that's it. I just wanna thank the parents again for your patience, your support, and, and know that we're here to, to listen to you and to, of course, um, assist your students in their educational journey. So again, thank you so much. I wish you all a good evening. Please stay safe, and hopefully we'll have some fresh air soon to breathe. So have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you.